Hi, everybody. This is Chrissy. We're going to get started in just a couple of seconds. I'm going to give everybody a chance to get logged in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, depending on how you're watching, um, if you're watching through YouTube uh, or if you're watching in Google Hangouts, you should have either a group chat or a live chat. Uh, you can ask questions on either of those. Uh, I'll try to answer them. Uh, if it's relevant to what I'm discussing at that moment, I will try to answer it at that time. Otherwise, we might wait until the question and answer at the end. I will try to answer all questions, but of course, if you ask something super complicated, I might not have time to answer it during this webinar. So I might have to take that offline with you. So, okay, let me get one started. All right, so this is our WordPress crash course. Uh, we've done this a few times before. Uh, I recently updated it because there is a new version of WordPress out. Uh, right now, WordPress 5.0.1, uh, and 5.0.2 should be coming out in the next few days. Um, it's got some updates to the latest release, which just came out like a week ago. So it's relatively new. <clears throat> Excuse me. So most likely you are either new to WordPress, haven't used WordPress, um, maybe you've used WordPress before, but just wanted to get a refresher on it, maybe haven't used it lately. Uh, so hopefully this will give you a good overview of what, what you can do with WordPress. So first a little bit about me, that's me right there. Uh, I am Chrissy and I am a former zoologist. I actually have a degree in zoology, uh, but then I became a programmer shortly after college. Uh, I have taught hundreds, actually thousands of people how to make websites. Um, I am the owner of Pongos Interactive, uh, which is a web dev and mobile application development company. And we work mostly with nonprofits, associations, and small businesses. Uh, we use a lot of WordPress. Uh, I would say 99, maybe 99.9% .9 of the websites that we build are with WordPress at this point. Um, sometimes we do a little bit of custom, sometimes Drupal, um, but usually it's WordPress. Uh, in addition to that, I'm also the founder and one of the instructors and director of the Pongos Learning Lab and Coder Kids Club. It's a program that we started a few years ago to offer STEM or STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, engineering, arts and math uh, programming for kids. Uh, right now, we, you might have seen my chat earlier. Um, we have a Minecraft club going on in the other room right now. So we've got a few kids over there building. Uh, they're doing a themed build in Minecraft. And uh, this month, the themed build is Winter Wonderland. So we have a private Minecraft server, and they're building it. I have lots of fun clubs with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for this WordPress crash course, we're going to cover a few things. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what WordPress is, what it's not. Uh, we will cover some of your hosting options, uh, how to manage content. We'll also talk about customizing your appearance for your WordPress website. And finally, we'll discuss extending functionality. We usually do have some time at the very end for question and answer. So, so if you have a question that's not covered by one of those topics and you want to ask it at the end, that's totally fine. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable asking your question live, uh, in, in one of the live chats or anything like that, you can email it to me. Uh, if you signed up for the class via the Eventbrite link, you should have received an email from me. So you can send it there. Um, I'm going to try to keep an eye on my emails. I may or may not be able to, but I will try. And I will answer questions as frequently as I can. All right, so first things first, what is WordPress? It is a CMS or a content management system. And it's really easy to use. Uh, I have been building WordPress sites for many years now. Um, prior to WordPress, I did build uh, we uh, websites with other content management systems. Uh, and we sort of gravitated towards WordPress because it was really flexible, but it was also really easy for our end users to, to actually manage their own sites. So that was where we sort of landed uh, with WordPress was because of the ease of use. It's also very widely used. Um, and just to give you some numbers to go with that, I've got a little link here. This is uh, going to show us that the 59.6% of websites are using WordPress. So it's quite a few. Sorry, 59.6% of 
sites that are using a content management system are using WordPress. And it's 32.6% of all websites. So that is quite a lot of websites that are using WordPress. Now, given there's a very good chance that a lot of those are some of the free uh, WordPress sites that people put up on WordPress.com. Um, they just created their website and stopped using it. They that, So that's probably counted in that number, but still uh, a lot of those websites are actually live and real websites. And you can see that it's it's a uh, far far beyond any the second and third place uh, content managed websites and overall websites. So you can see quite a few content management systems listed on here. All right. Another thing that we like about WordPress is that it is open source. Uh, and if you don't know what that means, that's we'll take a look at the license for WordPress. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The license for WordPress is GPL version two or later. Um, and that what that basically means is that uh, if you get a copy of WordPress, you can do whatever you want to it. You can change it. You can add to it. You can modify it. You can do whatever you want to it. You could gut it if you wanted to. Um, and you can re-release it as your own. Uh, but it still has to have the same license to it. Um, some other open source content management systems also have a similar license. So uh, it, is, it is pretty widely used. Um, so open source is really nice. It's also free. Uh, so if you want a copy of WordPress, you can actually go to wordpress.org and you could go to get WordPress and you can download a copy of it. You can just download a zip file of WordPress and you can install that wherever you want, uh, as long as it's somewhere that supports WordPress, uh, has all the minimum requirements, which we'll go over in a little bit. But you can download it, install it. Uh, you can modify it again. Um, you don't have to pay for it. Now, that's not to say that you don't have to ever pay for it. So for example, if you want to put it on a hosting provider, you would have to pay for the hosting provider to host WordPress for you. Um, there are a lot of instances where if you want to have extensions to WordPress that we'll talk about later on, you might have to pay for those. So even though the core of WordPress is free, uh, then there, there are other things uh, that are kind of around WordPress that are not necessarily free. So just something to keep in mind. All right, let me close that. Uh, WordPress is uh, based on PHP and MySQL. PHP is the language that it's written in uh, for the uh, for the sort of underlying structure. Uh, MySQL is where it's stored. Uh, it can run on quite a variety of server software, web server software. Um, well, and we'll take. Oops, sorry, I clicked on the wrong link. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the requirements. Um, in a little bit for the installation, but uh, PHP and MySQL are sort of the, the framework underneath of it. Um, it also uses a lot of HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and other stuff underneath of there. But if you want to really get into customizing WordPress, um, sorry, let me go back to that slide. If you really want to get into customizing WordPress, P knowing PHP is pretty important. Um, knowing HTML and JavaScript and CSS will also be extremely helpful if you really want to get into customizing the content management system or uh, extending it. Now, as far as your hosting options, you do have quite a few. Uh, I'm actually going to, let me get out of this for a second. I want to go to WordPress.org again. Um, so if I was to go back to get WordPress, Got a handy guide. Um, I want to see the before you install. Thanks to know before you begin installing WordPress. Uh, just to show you, this is something called the WordPress Codex. Uh, it's sort of the online uh, guide for WordPress. There's tons of information on here. But one of the things I want to point out is that there are minimum requirements to run WordPress. So you do want to make sure uh, before you install it, when you're when you're choosing a hosting provider, that it meets the minimum requirements. So one of the minimum requirements is that it has version PH, uh, PHP version 7.2 or greater. Uh, it's, it's end of life cycle for uh, some of the older versions of PHP, so they're no longer supporting it. Um, you also want MySQL version 5.6 
are greater, or you can see there's another database system that you can use, MariaDB. You do want to have HTTPS support. Uh, they do recommend Apache or Nginx as their web server. If all of this is complete, just sort of alphabet soup for you, don't worry. Uh, you can send this page to your hosting provider if you already have a hosting provider. Um, you can see they've got a nice little thing you can copy and paste and send to them if you already have a hosting provider. Uh, and you can ask them for some help with that. Uh, but I am going to show you some, let me present this again. I'm going to show you some hosting options that, that we use here at Pongos that you might want to consider. Um, and all of these have WordPress optimized hosting. So um, when you go to install WordPress, so as you saw earlier, you can go to wordpress.org, you can download a zip file and you can, you can grab it, you can install it anywhere. You can install it on your computer, you can install it really anywhere. So once you have it, you need to think about, well, where, where are you going to install it? Um, you can do it on WordPress.com. And WordPress.com is a place that a lot of people have discovered WordPress. This is sort of where a lot of people went for WordPress in the first place. Um, they do have a free option. Um, and this is a really good way if you really just kind of want to play around with WordPress. You don't want to pay for hosting yet. You just want to see what it does uh, if you're if you're comfortable with it um, and you can just get a free site with that just be aware if you do that then your uh, the site that you're using um, it's going to have wordpress.com advertising on it you can turn that off by using a paid site um, you can see that it does they do have uh, personal premium and business plans on wordpress.com so these have a, additional features. Um, you can see, for example, with the personal, um, it lets you turn off the WordPress.com ads. Uh, with premium, it lets you do a little bit more, like you can monetize your site. So uh, if you're doing this for a business site, you're doing this for a blog where you want to put ads or anything like that, then you're going to need at least a premium account. Um, if you are running a business, then you probably will want to have, you can see there's lots of features here for the business site. Um, things like you can install plugins, you can upload your own themes, um, you can remove the WordPress.com branding. So th there's a lot of feet. There are a lot of features with the business account, and it's twenty-five dollars a month. It's billed annually, so it's it's a, that's a pretty good deal. Um, if that's a little bit rich for your blood, don't worry. I'm going to show you some other options, but this is one option for you. One of the nice things about going with WordPress.com, uh, this is run by Automatic. Um, they're a pretty big driving force behind WordPress.org and the WordPress community. Uh, so you do know that you're going to get really good support with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and you're you're pretty you, you can, you're going to have pretty good uptime uh, with a site like this if you're if you're hosting it on WordPress.com. We have a couple of customers that are currently using WordPress.com. Another option that you have for hosting, um, and this is one that we actually host a lot of our customers. Um, it's uh, it has a lot of the same features as WordPress.com, um, but they might be for smaller businesses might be good. Uh, for some for some larger businesses, it might be good. Um, you can see that they have their startup, uh, which is uh, twenty eight dollars a month. Um, they basically do theirs with, uh, they, they sort of scale theirs by visits per month and how many sites are included with it. So with the WordPress.com site, uh, that $25 a month that you were paying, that was for one site. Uh, you can see here, if, you're, if you have several websites, uh, you might get a better deal paying $92 a month for five websites. Or if you have a bunch of websites like we do, you might be better off paying $232 a month for 15 websites. Um, it does include quite a bit. Um, one of the things that you might have, if you might remember from the uh, WordPress.com business account, um, you had to pay the business $25 a month to be able to install your own plugins and themes. Uh, their least expensive, which is $28 a month, has that feature. Um, one of the other things that we'll talk about a little bit later on is that it does also have 
a whole bunch of themes included with it, which are really nice. Um, we really like Word Pro, uh, WP Engine because it has a dev, stage, and production environment set up that's really nice. Um, and it does automated SSL, which is, is also very nice for security. Um, and they also have a CDN, which is a content distribution network. And what that does is it helps to uh, speed up your content delivery um, for a lot of your users. It also has some really good uh, page, uh, word site, sorry, WordPress site optimization features. So we do like WP Engine. All right, so that's another option you have. Uh, Bluehost is another good one. We've had a couple of clients use that. Um, don't use the, if you go to bluehost.com, you just go to the homepage, don't use that hosting. Um, while it does support WordPress, it's not WordPress optimized. So it's, it, we've had a couple of clients that used it and, and had to switch over to their WordPress optimized hosting, their WordPress specific hosting. So if you click on WordPress hosting over there and take a look, you'll see that they have some different some other some plans here. They are inexpensive. They're very inexpensive, um, but be aware that you are most likely going to be on shared hosting with this, um, and you might see the performance isn't as good as you're going to get with some of those more expensive hosting providers. Um, you'll still have a lot of the same functionality, but this is really good for getting started. If you want to be able to install your plugins, um, you just you just want to get a site up and running. Um, and, and they have a lot of really nice features, so it's 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 good. Um, it's just not necessarily for the for more of an enterprise. Not I wouldn't even say not enterprise, but it's uh, it's a uh, a lower end. You're you're getting what you pay for with it. So I, I'm trying to be nice here. Um, but yeah, so if if you're just getting started, it's totally fine to use something like Bluehost. Um, you might want to look instead at their WordPress Pro. Um, that's going to give you a little bit more of a robust installation. Um, it is a bit more expensive. So this is kind of taking you to the level of the WordPress.com or um, the WP Engine. And it's got the, uh, the optimization um, that you're going to get on a provider like those other two. So this is something um, that you might want to consider if you're maybe just beyond getting started. Okay. Uh, DreamHost is another option, and again, we've had clients on DreamHost. Um, same thing as Bluehost. Um, they, they are very inexpensive. You can get started for just a few dollars a month. Um, we'll take a look at their specifically at their WordPress hosting. And if you see WooCommerce, WooCommerce is related to WordPress. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, but you can see their WordPress hosting plans start at $2.59 a month. Um, Again, very inexpensive. It's it works fine, um, but they're they're gonna probably want you to use their DreamPress hosting, which is higher performance. It is more optimized for WordPress. It's faster. Um, your users are gonna get a better experience with that. Uh, one thing that you do really want to be careful with is is uh, with WordPress. Um, it can be a bit of a server and a resource hog. So you do want to have that optimized hosting with caching and all kinds of other nice features uh, so that your users are getting their site, they're getting that first page load very quickly. All right, one more option. We have a couple of clients using this one as well, SiteGround. Um, they do have their, their managed hosting, again, very inexpensive. Um, they've got a special price right now. You can see they're all very inexpensive right now. Um, they also have, oops, they've got some, oh, sorry, dedicated servers. Sorry, I'm having trouble here with my mouse. You can get dedicated servers. Um, these are going to be a bit more expensive, but they also have a lot more uh, resources underneath of them. So just a few things to keep in mind. Um, now, as far as deciding which of those options you want. And there are others. So those those few that I have listed here, those are not all of the WordPress hosting providers out there. There are many others. Um, so you wanna think about a, a few things when you're thinking about which one are you gonna pick? So first thing is, of course, what is your budget? If your budget is $5 a month, you kinda have to go with a $5 a month hosting provider. So if, if you don't have 25, 30, $50 a month to pay, 
um, then you might have to start with a three or four or five dollar a month hosting provider, and that's fine. Uh, just again, be aware that if you're only paying three, four, or five dollars a month, then you're going to be getting a slower site. So just as long as you're okay with that, then the three, four, or five dollar a month sites, those are fine. Um, how much traffic do you expect? Uh, one thing to be aware with those really inexpensive uh, hosted sites is that sometimes they will have either throttling. So once you exceed a certain number of hits or bandwidth or usage, uh, your site might not load for users. It might it might get a message saying that you've exceeded your uh, your usage for the month. So just that is something to be aware of. If you're expecting a lot of traffic, um, you're going to want to go with a hosting provider that's going to give you more bandwidth, more usage, uh, more, more page loads. What kind of content are you going to share? If you're going to have a lot of images, uh, you're going to have a lot of media on your site, you probably will want to use something that has a CDN, that content distribution network. Uh, so that's, that's, that is something to consider. It is more expensive to have that because they're, they're using a service and they have to pay for that service. And so you're paying for it through them. Uh, but that is, that is something that you might want to consider. Um, another option is, do you want to manage the server or would you like an expert to manage it for you? Um, in a lot of the cases of the more expensive sites that I showed you, they do automatic WordPress updates. They will manage the host, they, they'll manage all the security and they'll manage all kinds of stuff for you. So you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, but some of the cheaper ones, you might have to actually run the updates yourself. You might have to manually go in and update it. I will warn you, if you're getting a WordPress site and you're not doing the updates on a regular basis, it, you're basically just asking to be hacked. Um, WordPress is open source. One of, the, in, one of the nice things about that is that there are a lot of people that know how to use WordPress and a lot of developers that can develop on WordPress. One of the downfalls of that is there are a lot of people that know how to also find the bugs in WordPress and hack the bugs in WordPress. So uh, if you if you don't update your site and you apply the patches uh, that get released pretty frequently, uh, anytime uh, the security providers find a bug in WordPress uh, that make it easier to hack, they, they fix it and they release a patch uh, that you can, or it's a, it's a dot release and you can update your Word, excuse me, your WordPress site. Um, like I said, 5.0.1, um, that was released just a few days after 5.0 came out, and that was a security release. Um, they found some issues uh, where um, users could uh, do things that they shouldn't be able to do, and so they they put out a release. So if you have if you have 5.0 and you haven't updated to 5.0.1, you have to update to it. You really want to update to it, or your site could get hacked. Um, we've run into clients who we've inherited or who. Uh, didn't want to pay for us to update their site for them or didn't want to update it themselves or for whatever reason they haven't been updating their sites and you know what we won't hear from them for months or years and then we suddenly hear from them because their site's been hacked and they need help getting it unhacked or they need to they need to fix it so don't fall into that trap if you if you don't want to pay someone to update it for you you need to make sure you're staying on top of that and updating it yourself um, some other things you want to consider, do you need direct access to your files or the database? Some hosting providers will not give that to you. All you have access to is the WordPress dashboard, which we're going to take a look at in a little while. Um, another, a few other things that are important. Um, are you going to do the backups? Uh, in some cases, like we use WP Engine and you can, you can press a button in the, in the WP Engine dashboard uh, and have it do a backup for you before you make any changes to the site. So before you do an upgrade, before you upgrade your plugins, before you make a content, a really big content change or a big uh, appearance change, you can back up the site. And then when you need to roll it back because something broke, you can just press another button and it restores that backup of the site. Um, and it automatically does daily backups for you. So every day at the same time, It'll do that backup for you. So if your site gets hacked, if something crashes, something you know something happens to it, you can roll back to that update. So it's, that's a really nice feature. Um, some of the less expensive hosting providers may or may not provide that service, but that is something um, that you will probably want to pay for because you want to you want to make sure that you can get your site back if something breaks. Um, security is also very important. Like we already said, WordPress can be hacked. It's, it is, it's going to happen at some point. Hopefully you won't get hacked, but WordPress does get hacked every once in a while. Um, 
is there active security measures against that? So a lot of the hosting providers that I mentioned earlier, they actively monitor usage of the site. So if they notice that somebody is trying to hack into your site, they're trying to do a brute force attack on your site, they're going to block the IP address of that user. So that's, that's a very, very useful feature. Um, in some cases, they're using security plugins. There are several security WordPress plugins out there um, that do a lot of that work for you. Um, so that just something you have to consider if the hosting provider isn't doing the security uh, management for you, you could install a plugin that'll do that for you. Uh, you also want to consider, are you planning to install plugins or themes, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Uh, but as we saw earlier, some of the lower, the less expensive uh, plans for WordPress.com, you can't install plugins or themes. You just use whatever they have installed already. Uh, you have to pay a bit more to, uh, to be able to do that. So something to keep in mind. Um, another thing is, do you need development and or staging copies of your site? So one of the things that we often do for our clients is we will create a development copy of the site and we'll do all of our programming on that and we'll make all our theme changes and all of our code changes on that. Let the client look at that, say, yes, this looks good. And then we'll push that code to, uh, to the live site or go from dev to staging to live. So it's a, it's a nice workflow. Um, it lets us move our content, uh, move our code um, so that we aren't making the code changes on the live site. That's always scary and dangerous. You don't want to make your code changes there before they're approved. Um, when it's time to install WordPress, um, a lot of those hosting providers that I've already mentioned, they'll install it for you. So if you get a site on, if you if you get a uh, hosting with WP Engine, when you buy that hosting, they're going to install WordPress for you. you. And if you get more than one site, it'll they'll install one for you, and then you can just go through, click a button, and install the rest. Um, same thing with WordPress.com. It comes with WordPress already installed. Totally fine. Um, it is a good idea uh, to install a copy of it live on your own site or a local installation. So that way you can get some practice with it. Um, and I'm actually, I actually have a copy of it installed. I use this thing called the Bitnami installer. You can install, let me get it here. You can install on Windows. You can install it on Mac. You can install it on Linux. Uh, so you've got a few options here. What this does is it's going to let you download an executable file that you'll install on your computer. And it will have the... Uh, the web server, it'll have uh, Apache. Apache is the web server. Um, it'll also have uh, MySQL, PHP, and everything as a package. So you don't have to install all those things on your computer. You can just download them as a package and install them and run it. It's awesome. It works very nicely. So I'm going to open that. Sorry, one second. Let me open that up real quick so I can show you. So I've got like two windows here. I've got to find my window. Let me bring it over here. There we go. All right. So I've got, you can see here, I've got, um, this is my Bitnami. Uh, I did the virtual machine. So I can stop it and start it. I've got an IP address and everything. Um, if I click on go to application, it's actually going to open up the copy of WordPress that I have installed on my computer. There it is. Lovely. Um, you can also go to wordpress.org, as I showed you all earlier. Do that. You can go to get WordPress. You can download a copy of WordPress. Remember, if you're going to do this, you also need to have those minimum requirements. You need to have um, PHP, MySQL. You need to have Apache or Nginx. So just be aware that you need to already have those installed on the system where you're going to install this. So if, you're, if you want to do that route, that's fine. You just need to make sure that you already have, basically, uh, I, have, I have a Mac, uh, Mac, so it would be a MAMP. It would be uh, Mac, Mac, Apache, uh, MySQL, and PHP. So I would need all of that uh, installed on my system to get P, uh, WordPress running if I was to install this one. But I just installed the Bitnami, and it worked fine. So this is WordPress. This is the uh, sort of base site using the default theme, default plugins, and everything else. And we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. All right, so back to here. 
Um, now, if you do need to install, sorry, if you do need to install WordPress and you're not, you don't want to use Bitnami, um, you don't want to install on one of those WordPress optimized hosting providers. Let's say that you want to go, you have a hosting provider. They're not necessarily a WordPress hosting provider. Maybe they have all of the minimum requirements, but they don't install WordPress for you. You have to do it yourself. Uh, you can do that. You can get the zip file from WordPress.org. Uh, there are instructions for installing it in that WordPress codex that I mentioned earlier. They've got some pretty detailed instructions. So again, you can check the requirements. They have a little five minute installation, which just gives you the, the base uh, steps for it. You do need to have FTP access to the server uh, so you can upload the files. You do need to have uh, database username, uh, uh, MySQL or MariaDB username. Um, so just some things that you have to be aware of. So you do have to do a little bit extra work. All right. Now, once you get WordPress installed, so let's just say that you've got WordPress installed, you're ready to go, you're ready to get started. Um, now you're ready to actually go into the WordPress dashboard, modify some settings, play with your WordPress content, add some posts and pages. So we'll talk about all that next. All right, and I'm just gonna check the live chat real quick. Give me one second. I'm just gonna check emails and live chat and make sure that nobody is asking questions. Hold on one second. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. All right, so I don't see any questions. Remember, you can ask questions in the uh, WordPress, in the, the live chat on the YouTube. Uh, if you're in the Hangout, you can ask it there. You can also send an email. If you have a question, you can send an email to me. One second, let me just double check. I'm gonna check the Facebook event to make sure that there's nothing in there. So I don't wanna miss any questions. Nope, okay, I think we're good. Okay, so back to this slideshow. So the WordPress dashboard, uh, when you get started with WordPress, the back end, sort of the, the control panel for WordPress, um, that's referred to the dashboards, the, the WordPress dashboard. And you usually go to it. So if, you, if you're looking at a WordPress site, it's going to be whatever the URL of your WordPress site is, slash wp-admin. Um, so the URL that I have right here is just an example. This is not a live site. So if I was to open that up, it's going to give me a 403 forbidden. It's, it's not live. But if I did go to a live site like my website, pongos.com slash WP admin, um, you can see that it does go to the dashboard. And I've already logged into the site. So it's going to, and you can see it's hosted on WP engine. Um, so just, just something you can, so you can see. And we'll, and we'll look at a few different dashboards. So the WordPress dashboard, uh, it's gonna, it is gonna look different depending on where WordPress is installed and also what level of hosting you have. Um, so I actually created sort of a placeholder website so you could see this. Um, this is on wordpress.com. So I'm gonna log into the dashboard for my Primate project on wordpress.com. And this is what the dashboard looks like when I log in through wordpress.com. Uh, WordPress um, so I have, it looks a lot different than it does uh, with the WP Engine site, but I have a, a lot of the same stuff. It's just styled a little bit differently. Um, so you can see that you're on WordPress.com. Um, also, a few things are different. So like if I go to plugins, um, I'm logged into WordPress.com. This is a free account on WordPress.com. And you can see if I go here, I go to plugins, it tells me I need to upgrade to the business plan to install plugins. So I can, I can kind of look at stuff in here, but I can't install anything uh, unless I have the business plan. But I can still search for stuff. And I can customize my theme and everything. But there, this is what the dashboard looks like in uh, WordPress.com. Um, if I, and I already showed you what it looked like for, um, on WP Engine, this is what the dashboard looks like. And even if you're on WP Engine, your dashboard might look different because I have different plugins installed than you might have. So, um, for my WordPress, uh, website on WP Engine, I have a bunch of, like, I have WooCommerce installed. I've got Smart Simeon. Um, I've got, uh, Gravity Forms. These are all plugins that I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, uh, but these are all going to, the dashboard menu is going to look different depending on what you have installed. 
Um, one thing that is in common for WP Engine sites is that you are going to have a WP Engine menu item um, that's going to let you do things like get to the WP Engine user portal pretty quickly and easily, access support, do backups and stuff like that right from the dashboard. So it makes it a little bit easier for you. All right, so let me close a few of these windows. And the last one I'm going to open is, oops, sorry, went back too far, is uh, the one that I installed on this computer with Bitnami. So that's that one with that IP address. I'm going to run that. And that's going to take me into the dashboard for the one that I installed with the Bitnami. And, and I did the virtual machine installer. So we can see here it is. And you can see it looks really similar to what I had on WP Engine. Um, but again, because I have different plugins installed, uh, then it's it's going to have different menu items over here on the left side. Okay, so I do want to show you a few menu items. Let me go on to the next slide so you can see what we're going to talk about. So I usually when I when I get started with WordPress, um, it's I usually have a few things that I a few settings that I need to change, um, and these are a few that I do want you to be aware of uh, because. That I don't like the defaults for them, um, but they're they're good for most people, or they're good for a lot of people. But the defaults aren't necessarily the best thing for everybody. So I'm going to show them to you. Um, the first one is the time zone. It is a good idea. Um, so so you would go into your WordPress dashboard, um, and you can see that there's settings, and then general. So I'm going to go to settings and then general. So the time zone. Uh, actually, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my title. So the title should actually be whatever the name of your website is. So I'm going to call this Primate Project and give it a tagline. OK. Um, you want to have an email address. I'll put an email address on there. Info, we'll do info on this.com. But the time zone is pretty important. Uh, because this is the time that's going to be used for the website. So if you're posting events on here, if you're posting really anything, like you're posting news or anything like that, you want it to be the time zone that you're in. The time zone that if this is for your business, you want it to be the business's time zone. If this is for uh, for something specific, like a, a fan site or something like that, you want to make sure that this is set to your time zone or the time zone of whatever entity it is that you're representing on the website. So I'm in, I'm near Washington, D.C. Um, they don't have Washington, D.C. So I'm going to get New York is the closest that I can find. So same, same time zone as what I am in. Um, the other thing that I usually do, um, I mean, you can change the date format and time format if you want. I usually leave those alone. Uh, but I usually also do change the week starts on. Um, by default, it's Monday. But then when, that, when the calendars get displayed, and, and I'll show you what this does. Uh, a little bit later on, but when a calendar gets displayed, it'll start on Monday. So you'll have like a grid calendar, a table calendar. It'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm used to seeing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. So I usually change that to Sunday. And then you want to make sure you save the changes. So I save changes. Um, it's going to send an email to info at pongos.com uh, to confirm that that's a real email address before it actively changes that email address. So I'll check that later. It's not really that important right now. Uh, another thing that I usually check is the permalinks. So the, the default permalinks are usually totally fine. Um, permalinks are going to be um, how the, the URL gets, gets displayed for, for the site, um, depending on what web server you're using. So if you remember back, um, Apache and Nginx are usually or what they recommend, but you can actually run WordPress on other web servers. Um, so for example, we used to run WordPress, we'd have clients who were on Windows hosting, and so they would be using IIS. Um, and so the permalink settings were sort of tied to what web server you had. Um, in order to set this sort of permalink setting up, you have to have certain things installed on the server, and uh, it, it, it couldn't run it couldn't display this way on some web hosting, or sorry, some, some web servers. So just be aware that what you see on here might be different depending on what your web hosting provider has for you. 
Um, the other thing is if your links all worked and your permalinks and everything work fine, and then you install a plugin or you delete a plugin or you change something um, and they suddenly start working, stop, sorry, start, suddenly stop working. Um, one thing that you probably want to do is come in here. Don't make any changes. Just hit save changes. And what that'll do is it will update your HT access file that's on your server. So there's a little file, it's like a little invisible file that's sitting on your web server um, that has your permalink settings in it. And it'll just update that. So it, sometimes it'll get it, something will get messed up in there uh, or something gets lost. And just him, simply going to this page and clicking on save changes will fix it. So if, if, just something to be aware of. Finally, the privacy setting. Uh, you probably remember back in May or so, uh, people got, you probably got thousands of emails saying, we've updated our privacy policy from every website you've ever visited or ever gave your email address to. Um, that is because of a new law in the European Union, GDPR. And that is a privacy law. And uh, if your customers or site visitors, like your, your, well, your customers uh, are from Europe, if they're from the European Union, you really need to make sure that you're being careful and you're following the GDPR guidelines and everything. Um, they added this privacy policy stuff to help with that. So just, just something to be aware of. There, there are additional features that, that were added to WordPress to help support uh, GDPR, but this, this is one thing. You wanna make sure that you have a privacy policy page on your site. So something to be aware of. All right. So let me just check. Are there any questions so far? I'm just going to go through and check the emails. All right. Give me one second here. I don't see anything yet. All right. I think we're good. Sorry, I keep pausing like this. I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions as they come up. So and I'm, and I'm checking like four different places. So bear with me. All right, so back to our slideshow. Give me one second here. All right, so back to our slideshow. And next up, we are going to talk about WordPress content types. So when you're working with WordPress, after you've set up your settings, you're ready to go through and add posts, pages, media, comments, or anything else. Um, WordPress comes with a few me a few content types. It comes with posts and pages, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, media is another content type, um, and comments are another content type. Uh, but you can add anything else. So, like if, for example, you need to have uh, testimonials, you need to have a portfolio, uh, staff bio, staff directory, or something like that, a library, resources, anything like that. You can add those. They just don't come built into WordPress. So you could use a plugin that we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later on uh, to create those custom post types for you. So the, the first post type that you're, we're gonna look at within WordPress is posts. So posts are one of the main post types, one of the main content types in WordPress. And you might hear me use those terms interchangeably, post type and content type. To me, they mean the same thing. Um, but post type, it, it, they used to be called custom, or they I think they still are, custom post types. Um, but basically everything in WordPress, all the content is a post. Um, it's just that there's, they each have, they can have different post types. So just that, that's why you might hear me use that term a lot. So a post is going to be content that's associated with a date. So if you're a blogger and a lot of people do start using WordPress cause it's perfect for blogging. That was its original purpose was for blogging. Um, so if you are a blogger, this is going to be the bulk of your content. You're going to use mostly posts and you might have a few other types of content there. So the nice thing about posts is that they can have taxonomies applied to them. So you can tag them, you can categorize them, uh, which makes it easier for users to find content and to find related information. So you can have all of your, so using my primate project as an example, I could have every post that's related to orangutans, I could have that tagged orangutan. So when a user reads the orangutan, the latest orangutan news, they can then click on the orangutan tag and see more posts about orangutans. So it's a really nice feature to have. Um, the latest version of WordPress does have a new editor. So if you've used WordPress in the past, uh, what you used before, if you used WordPress before like last week, um, the editor that you used is now called the classic editor. 
And the new way is called Gutenberg. Um, and we'll, we'll take a look at that. So if we go back into that WordPress dashboard that I had already set up, if I go and I add a new post, this is Gutenberg. This is the Gutenberg uh, editing screen. And the way that they've changed the editing in WordPress kind of recently is uh, everything is blocks. So you, you can have your title can be a block, um, your content, you can have media blocks, you can have all kinds of blocks within your WordPress pages and posts and custom post types. So I'm gonna add a title. This is gonna be about orangutans. All right, there's my title. So when I just, when I click down here, I am I can type, this is a block of text. And then I can add more blocks by clicking on this little plus up here, this little plus sign up here. Or I can just press enter and that'll actually add a new paragraph block. So if, I, if I'm already in this block and I press enter, that adds a new paragraph block. If I wanted to. Um, you can then change it. I can add images. I can add all kinds of stuff. So I'm actually going to add an image block. And I'm going to upload an image. So let me go into my media. Add this guy. You can see I'm just adding some text there. You can then move, you can change the order of your blocks really easily. So I can make this first, or I can make it second. I'm just using these arrows to move it up or down. So these are just basic blocks. This is text, this is an image, this is more text. There are some more advanced blocks now. So this is a really nice feature of Gutenberg. Uh, you can add some advanced features like columns. And within your columns, you can have additional block types. So I can add an image to one of my columns. I'll just add another copy of that same picture. Add another image. Yes, I keep adding the same image, but that's okay. So I've just added two columns worth of content here. This is a nice new feature that they added. I'm going to add another block with a YouTube video. Let me get the URL for it. One second. I'm just going to get the URL for one of my videos. So I'm going to embed this YouTube video here. And I'll add another block. I'm just adding, adding some blocks here just so you can see them. Uh, they also do have some inline blocks. So like if you wanted to add an image as part of your text, you can do that. These are the common blocks that you've pretty much already seen. You can add a cover, which is, I'll show you that in a, in a, on a page instead of on here. You can add a link to a file. You got some formatting blocks here, layout elements. So if you wanted to add a button to something, you could. Um, this is also a really nice feature. You could add widgets. Um, widgets are uh, sort of chunks of code that are reusable within WordPress. So I could add um, a link to the latest posts right there. And then if I wanted to, I could delete a block. So I can click here and remove it. But I can also add all kinds of embeds. This is a nice new feature. Um, I can embed content from Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, all kinds of websites that have consumable content. So lots of blocks that you can have here. Now, another feature that we have for the blocks, oops, let me get this click here. So if you click on any of the blocks, so if I'm gonna click in this block here, um, notice that whenever I click on a block, I get this little context menu that pops up above it. And that has, it, it is context sensitive, so it gives me formatting specific for the type of block. So my columns, it's going to give me column specific 
formatting <coughs> for my video. It's going to give me the formatting for that. Um, the other nice thing is I can add these to reusable blocks. So if I wanted to be able to insert the same video a whole bunch of places, I could add this block to my reusable blocks. I'm going to just save that as app video, my app video block. And then if I wanted to now, I could add my app video block anywhere else on the site. I don't have to remember what the URL was. I can just add it. Makes things a lot easier. Uh, so a few other things, like if you go into the text, you do get text formatting. So you can add bold text. You can add links. You can strike through, do all kinds of stuff. Um, you can also duplicate blocks. Uh, if you have a text block, block, you can edit it, edit it as HTML or visually. So you've got a lot of really nice features here. And you can remove a block if you need to. Notice that you also have some settings over on the right side of the screen. So over here, uh, I can change a few, a few things about this block. I have some color settings available. And I can add some additional CSS to that block. So I've got a lot of options here. Um, if I select this image, you can see that I do, again, I have several settings over here that I don't have over here on the left side. But you can see over here on the right, I can set an alt alternative text. I can change the size of the image if I wanted it to be medium or thumbnail instead. I could do that. Go to full size. I can link to and other stuff. Uh, if I go into my app video, let me just remove it from re reusable blocks so I get it. Sorry, I got to add that back. Didn't mean to. There we go. So if I have to edit the video, um, I can modify some of the settings for the media that's in there. Now, if I click outside of the block, so I, I just kind of clicked to the left or the right of the blocks. Um, now I'm in the document. So I can modify some settings about the document. So I can do things like I can change the permalink. <clears throat> Oops, not yet. Uh, I can modify which categories. Right now, I've only got uncategorized. I could add a new category. I'll call this one Great Apes. Uh, every post needs to be in a category. Uh, the, the category might be uncategorized, but it's got to be in a category. Uh, I can add tags. So just leave that alone for right now. Um, when you or thinking about categories and tags, um, think of categories as sort of a table of contents, and tags are keywords that would appear in an index. So that, that's the difference between the two. Um, categories can be um, hierarchical. Uh, tags are not. Tags are just sort of keywords that are thrown in there. Uh, you can also specify a featured image. I'm just going to use that same image again as my featured image. And you can add an excerpt. That's just sort of like if you have like short text appear uh, somewhere in the theme, you can do that. So now I'm going to preview this page. And this is what it looks like. Looks good. Not bad. So that's just previewed right now. And I'm going to publish it now. So preview is just where me as the administrator, I can see it. Um, but if I publish it, it's going to say, are you sure? And now I can publish it. And now I can view the post. So if I view the post, this is what it looks like. Now notice it looks a little bit different than it did when I previewed it. That's because it previously did not have the, uh, this is the featured image. It previously did not have the featured image showing up when I previewed it. And I don't know if the video is going to load or not right now. OK, so if, I'm, if I want to, I can edit the post. If I needed to, if I needed to change the URL, so you can see it automatically added. Um, it, it followed that permalink structure that I had set up in the settings. Again, it's under settings permalinks. Um, so it's using the structure that I had there. So it's adding the year, the month, and the day. And then it's adding this other bit right here, which is referred to as the slug. 
Um, and that's just, uh, it's going to take whatever your title was, whatever title you had set there, and it's going to strip out any special characters, spaces, or anything like that. It's going to make it so it's uh, pretty for the URL and pop that in there. You don't want it to be too, too long. So just be aware. All right. So uh, a couple other things I want to show you about posts before we move on to pages. Um, posts, you can set the visibility by default. It's going to be public. You can change it so that it's private, and that way only people that are administrators of the site or editors of the site, uh, which are two of the user types um, that are that are found over here under users. We'll talk about that. Actually, no, we don't we don't talk about it, that in the, the in this class. We just assume that you're going to be an administrator. Um, it, you can also make it password protected. Uh, password protected, it's only going to be a password for this page. So it's not like a, a password for the whole site. Um, if you want to password protect the whole site or large chunks of the site, you're probably going to need a plugin to do that, um, like a membership plugin to act as sort of a gatekeeper for content. Uh, that's definitely outside of the scope of this of this uh, workshop, but that is something if you are interested in it, I could probably do another video down the road. All right. Um, some other stuff that we've got here, sorry. Under um, under status and visibility, um, notice the publish date. It is seven. It was seven fifty three p.m. when I published it. Uh, if I wanted to have it published in the future, I could. So, like, if I said, "Oh, I wait a minute. I want it to publish tomorrow at, at uh, eight o'clock." Yeah. What I would do now, if I clicked on update, it's now scheduled. So, if I was to go and view the post. I can see it, but if a user was to come to the site and try to look at it, they're not going to be able to see it. So you can see it doesn't actually show up in the site yet because it's in the future. So as an administrator, I can see it because I'm editing. I can edit it, um, but I can't. A user's not going to come to the site and see it until it's been published. It's scheduled to be published. Uh, the other nice thing is you can you can post date and past date. So like if you said, oh, wait a minute, I meant to publish this yesterday at eight o'clock, you can do that. So if you if you were, were supposed to publish it on Sunday, you can change it to being published on Sunday. Now I can republish it. All right. So you can see there's there are a lot of features that you've got here in this post editor. Um, again, if you are used to having um, having the functionality uh, from the, the classic editor, it, it's pretty similar. Um, there, there are some differences for sure, but it, it is pretty similar. Um, just a few other things I want to point out. Um, this little wedge or this little uh, settings icon up here toggles that that right menu area. So if you just want to edit and you don't want to have all that stuff over there, you can turn that off or hide it. Um, <clears throat> you can switch over to the code editor. The code editor is using uh, these comments to mark the, the blocks. So just be aware. So if you need to, if you need to modify in code, that's how you're going to do it. You can switch back. Um, you can also work in full screen mode, so that's going to hide everything, like the menus and everything else, um, so you're not going to see all that extra stuff. It makes it a little bit easier if you need distraction-free uh, editing. So if that's what you want, you can do that. All right. So I published that, I published that post, um, but let's say that you had a post that you wanted unpublished. You wanted to delete it. Um, I'm now back on the, the post screen. So this is if you go into the WordPress dashboard, if you either click on posts or you click on posts, all posts, this is going to show you all of your posts. Uh, you can select, you can move your mouse over one of the uh, one of the posts and you can put it in the trash. So I had that draft. Uh, just putting it in the trash doesn't delete it completely. It's still sort of sitting there. It's sort of like if you throw something in the trash on your computer, it just puts it in the trash can. It doesn't actually delete it. Um, you could go in here and restore that if you needed to. So that's going to put it back under all because it's not published. Uh, if you put it in the trash and then you actually want to delete it, you can empty the trash. So if you have multiple posts in the trash that you need to delete, 
you can empty the trash and get rid of all of them. Or you can just delete that one permanently. And that does remove it completely. It actually deletes it from the database. So just be aware of that. Um, here's another post. Uh, if, if you wanted to, you could throw that away. You can edit it. You can edit your posts after the fact if you needed to. So you've got lots of options here. Options here. I do, I do prefer to have the, uh, the full screen editor personally. If you wanted to add another post, you would just go to the post. You can add new. If you need to modify your categories or your tags, you can. Um, again, be aware, like if I needed to delete that great apes category, I could, but notice that I cannot delete uncategorized. It, it doesn't get deleted. It won't go away. Um, so just something to be aware of. You cannot delete it. But what you can do is you can change the name of it. So what I, a lot of times I'll do is I'll change it to news. I'll just call it news and I'll update that. So anything that's uncategorized, as far as I'm concerned, it's news. I don't like uncategorized. I, I prefer news. Uh, you can have uh, categories can be, again, hierarchical. So just, just be aware that they, they can. Um, tags, say, it's very similar to uh, categories. You can add them. You can edit them. Just notice that a big difference is that you cannot add a parent to a, a tag. They're not hierarchical like the categories are. All right, so that is our posts. Let me just check and see if there are any questions. So I'm just checking the live chats and the emails. I don't see anything yet. All right, don't see any emails yet, so I think we're good. All right, so next up, we are gonna look at, oops, Get in the right screen. Pages. So pages are going to be things like they're, I call them timeless information. They're not associated with a date. Um, I mean, they can be information that is posted for a short period of time, but there it's usually going to be things like your contact page, your about page, stuff like that. Uh, if you need things, and I mentioned this earlier, if you need things like a portfolio, testimonials, anything that might be searchable or filterable or sortable, um, you probably don't want to make pages for that. You might want to create a custom post type for that. Uh, again, that is that is not something that we cover in this crash course, but it is something that we could do as another webinar. Um, but that would be creating custom post types for, for those content types. And I'll, I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. Um, so pages can be organized into a hierarchy. So you can have like your about page and under that you could put your staff, you could put your history and stuff like that. Um, you can also have templates applied to them and we'll take a look at that. And the other thing about pages is by default, they do not have categories or tags applied to them. Uh, you can modify WordPress to apply those if you want to, but they're not added by default. So just something to be aware of. Oops. All right. So if we go back into the WordPress dashboard and we take a look at the pages, you can see here it's got our sample page. It's got the privacy policy. I'm, I'm going to click on, and you can see it's a draft. I'm going to click on the privacy policy so we can see that. So you can go through and edit this privacy policy. It's got a pretty, pretty comprehensive privacy policy some stuff that you'll have to fill in yourself. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add a new page. And this is going to be contact us. So I'm just going to say you can email us at info at pongos.com. And I want to preview this. So you can see it looks like this. Now, I'm going to turn the settings on so I can see some of the settings. Um, with the document, you can see that it looks similar to what you had for the post, but there are some differences. So um, under status and, and visibility, you can set them to public, private, or password protected. You probably don't want to password protect your, uh, your contact info, but you could if you wanted to. Um, you can have it published immediately, or you can pre or post. You can post or pass date it if you needed to. I'm going to have mine published immediately. Um, if I turned on pending review, 
Um, what that will do is uh, it will it will save it as pending, and then uh, another administrator or an editor would have to approve it before it gets published. So I'm just not going to do that. Um, the permalink, uh, I personally prefer for things like contact. I like just having contact instead of contact dash us. Just makes it easier if the user's trying to get to it. Uh, as you saw with the uh, the post, we can set a featured image. So I'm going to do that. Add my orangutans there. Um, you can turn on comments for the page. Uh, you, you have to be careful if if you have comments on, people might comment. So you may or may not that may or may not be a good thing. Just something to be aware of. And then finally, you've got these page attributes down at the bottom. Um, what you see down here is going to depend on the theme that you're using. In this case, um, my page attributes are. <coughs> excuse me. I can specify what what page is the parent of it. In this case, I'm not going to have a parent. <coughs> Excuse me. And then also the page order, which is sometimes used for um, ordering uh, in a menu. But in this case, I'm not going to worry about that. You can add blocks just like you had on the post. Uh, so you can add the same blocks that you had there. See, they're all in there. I can add that reusable block that I had before. <coughs> Excuse me, one second. Let me drink something real quick. All right, so now if I publish this page, I'm ready to publish it. Yes, publishing, it's now live, so I'm going to view it, and there it is. Look, contact us, yay. My video is not working quite right, but that's, it's on my computer, it's okay. Um, so there's our contact page. Now, how do I get to this page? It's not in my menu anywhere. So... That takes us back to our dashboard. Let's go back to the dashboard. Go back to view pages. And we're going to look at under appearance. And we're going to look at uh, the appearance a little bit more in detail in just a minute. But under appearance and then menus, I need to create a menu. So I'm going to create a new menu called main menu. And I want to display this as my primary menu. This is stuff that's defined by the theme, which we'll talk about in just a minute. And I'm going to add contact us to the menu. And I'm going to save it. So now if I visit the site, I'm going to open this up in a new tab so it's easier for me to get in and out with it. There is my menu. So now I can get to contact us. And we can see the contact us page. All right, so that brings us back to the next thing, which I'm going to talk about, which is customizing the appearance of our site. So before we go there, I'm just going to check real quick, see if there are any questions in the queue. I don't see any. All right, if you have a question, you can just put it in the live chat. Ask away, send me an email if you need to. Um, if you sign up by the event, the Eventbrite, uh, you have my email address. You can just send me an email. Uh, if you want to send it to me after the broadcast, I will try to answer it. Um, it may take me a few days. Just be aware. I, it may not answer very quickly. It's been a little crazy end of the year sort of stuff. All right. No questions right now. So back to the slides. Uh, customizing appearance. So... Um, when, when we talk about customizing the appearance of a WordPress site, one of the things that I really like about WordPress and part of why I chose WordPress um, as, a, as a tool uh, is you can, you can separate the content from the appearance. So your content, all of the stuff that I was adding in um, the posts and the page, that's all stored in the database. So like if I was to actually go into Bitnami, let me open Bitnami one second real quick. Sorry, one sec. See if I can do this. So if I was to actually go into, I'm not going to do it right now, but if I was to actually go into the MySQL database and, <clears throat> excuse me, and look at the, the database itself, I would actually see a table in there that had all of my posts stored in it. And the posts would include 
my my contact page it would include that orangutans are cool it would include all of the uh the bring this back up it would include all of the other content ah what happened that was loaded sorry one second let me bring my window back up Sorry, I hit that accidentally. Uh, so it, it would it would show me a word uh, sorry a, a MySQL table that contained all of that content. So it's not actually stored as files anywhere. It's actually stored in the database, which is really nice because um, if I need to change the appearance of the site, all I have to do is change what's called the theme of the site. So the theme is uh, it's it's a collection of PHP files, HTML, CSS, JavaScript and images, and that's what's known as a theme. The, the images that I put in there that I uploaded, that you saw me upload, um, those files are stored on the server, but the references to them are stored in the database. So uh, the content is, is pretty much all stored on the database. Um, so the really nice thing about WordPress with, with, with regards to themes is there are tons and tons and tons of free themes. So what I've been showing you so far uh, if I go to appearance themes, we have been looking at the site using the default theme, which is called 2019. Uh, the folks that make WordPress, uh, the, the volunteers that make WordPress, um, they name the, the theme, the default theme uh, after the year. So right now we're in 2019, they did 2017. I don't know if, I don't think there was a 2018. I'm not sure, I don't think there was. Um, I think they, cause they released 20, 19 they released gutenberg um so late in 2018 i think they just figured they'd call it 2019 instead of 2018 so but one of the nice features is you can add themes there are lots of free themes out there so if you click on i don't know if you saw what i clicked on let me go back to themes sorry i did a little quickly and you can see here there's a big old button that says add new theme or up here i can click on add new so either of those i can add a new theme so you can search for themes. There are lots and lots of free themes. Um, some of them are nice. Some of them are not. Some, you know, it really, these are free though. So these are what, what, what we usually refer to as, as community themes. Um, so you can search through them. Lots and lots of themes in here. Again, some of these look pretty nice. Um, you can filter. So like I want accessibility ready. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want blog. So I'm going to apply those filters and it takes me down to 69 options. I'm going to choose pep brand. So I can preview what it would look like. Uh, it doesn't put my content. It puts the preview content in there. See if that's what I want and say, yeah, maybe not. So I'll go back here and let's see if this one looks good. Let me preview this. That looks a little bit better. I like that one. Okay, but let me try one more. I'm gonna preview this one. Yeah, wait a minute. I like this one better. So I'm gonna go through and, and you can, you can uh, view pre, you can view more information about it. You can kind of click through and see what it looks like. Um, I'm gonna install it. So I, it's installed. If I look at my site, it doesn't change though. I've installed it, but in order to actually apply that theme that I just installed to the site, I need to activate it. So I click on activate, and now this is the active theme. And if I go back and look at my site, you can see it's now using that theme that I just activated. So it looks quite a bit different than it did before. But my content is all still there. So that orangutans are cool is still there got all that same content. It just looks different. The content looks different. Now, if I add another theme, let's just see. I'm gonna just going to pick one of these. I'm going to install this one. All right, and then I'm going to activate it to make this the active theme. So now when I refresh, again, it looks different. It looks very different this time. But it's still the same content. All those blocks are still in there. It's just that it looks different. It's using different fonts, different colors, different layout. You can see there's my menu for contact us. 
All right, let's add one more theme. So we have a few to work with. I'm going to go to popular and let's add stout. Oh no, let's add Sydney. I like that one. It's a nice one. And we'll activate that. Refresh. And that's what it looks like. That's pretty good. Now you can change to different themes. So if you wanted to, um, you can, un under themes, you can go through and let's say that, you know, I've, I've uh, activated Sydney and I decide, nah, I don't like that one. I want to activate engrave light instead. Again, I can do that. And that easily changes it back. Now, once you've activated a theme, you can then also customize the theme. What you can customize is going to vary depending on the theme. So different themes have different things that you can customize. So if we go and customize this one, which is Engrave Light, I can just click on that Customize button. That's going to take me to the customized screen. Number one, notice that it, it prompts me to upgrade. That's because this is the light version of a premium theme. And we'll take a look at premium themes again in just a minute, but I just want to mention that. Um, but you can go through and there, there's a bunch of options that you can set up. You can mess around with the home page layout. You can do all kinds of things here. Lots of different options here. Whatever changes you make, you can then publish them, and that's going to be what is live on your site. So there we go. <clears throat> now, if I was to switch to Embla instead, so let me switch to the Embla theme. That's what I activated and I was to customize that one, you'll see that you have a lot of different settings in here. So the settings that I have for the customization in this theme are very different from the one that I had in the other theme. So I'm gonna just change the colors here so you can see this. And then if I publish this, <coughs> you can see my site looks very different. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, now, another thing that you have within the customization, um, you can also modify, as I, as I showed you before, the menu. So the menus that exist by theme can be different. So you can see here, um, this particular theme has a main menu, and it also has a social menu in the footer. If I went back and I changed this to back to the engrave light theme, and I go to my menus, I now have pre-header menu, primary header menu, and footer menu. So you can see that the theme, the, the names of the different menus might change. So if you change to a different theme, you might have to consider that. The other thing that a lot of themes have, and I'll, I'll switch back to 2019 to show this, is widgets. So with widgets, you, you have different areas in the theme that have can have custom content. So you can add, uh, for example, in, in this case, we're using 2019, the footer has search, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, and meta. So I'm going to refresh this, and I'm going to scroll down, and that's all this stuff down here. So there's search, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, and meta. If I was to go through here, I could delete meta. Um, I could add calendar. So I wanted, to, I wanted to add the calendar so I can show you what I was talking about before. Uh, with regards to the calendar. So I deleted meta and I added calendar. And now when I refresh, you can see there's my calendar. Um, notice that my month or my my day, my week starts with Sunday and ends with Saturday. Um, going back to that setting that I showed you all in the beginning, under general, if I change this back to Monday, this is what I was talking about. When I refresh this and you look at the calendar, it starts with Monday. That that threw me off the first several sites that I did with WordPress. So I was like, why is the calendar so wrong? That's why. And it'll do that for every calendar in your site. So it doesn't matter if like you're using event plugins or anything like that. It'll that'll say it'll say the, the first day of the week is Monday for everything. So what this calendar does is it um it adds posts. Uh it adds links to um posts that are on whatever it is. So it'll take you to the date archive for that. But also notice that meta is gone because I deleted it. Now, if I was, if we go back to appearance widgets and notice I have this footer widget area. If I go to themes, 
And I change this back to Embla. If I activate Embla and then go back to my widgets. I have footer widgets, but I also now have this other footer copyright widget area. If I change the theme to engrave and go back to my widgets, I now have sidebar, footer widget one, footer two, three, four, five, and six. So again, the widget areas that you have, the menus, there are a lot of things that will change depending on which theme you're using. All right, so one of the nice things about um, the themes, the community themes that, that we just installed, um, those are considered community themes. They are free, as in free speech and also free beer. So like you're not paying for them. You don't, you don't pay for those community themes. Um, as you saw with the engrave light, they do a lot of times have upgrades available. Uh, so you can pay for more features, pay for more customization, functionality, flexibility. Um, so it just depends on the theme that you're working with. Um, but they are pretty easy to install, available through the dashboard. I um, already showed you how to install it and how to do the live preview. But now I want to talk about commercial themes. So commercial themes are themes that are uh, you're going to pay for them. Um, they, they can be inexpensive. They can be expensive. Um, in some cases, when you are installing these commercial themes, if you are on certain hosting providers, those, host, those hosting providers have licenses for those themes. So for example, uh, we use WP Engine for a lot, of our, uh, a lot of our clients, and we also use StudioPress. And it just so happened um, that we were using the two of those independently uh, for, for quite a few years, um, just because our, our clients really liked StudioPress themes. Um, if, if we weren't custom making a custom theme from scratch, um, sometimes we were just using the Studio Press themes, but we also use uh, Studio Press's framework uh, called Genesis that we'll talk about in a little bit to make our, some of our themes. So it just makes it easier for us to update them. And it just so happened we were using those two independently. We just like both of them. But WP Engine bought Studio Press, so when they did that, they made it so that all of the Studio Press themes are available as part of your account on WP Engine. So we can use those those themes on any site that is on WP Engine, and we're not paying extra for it. So that's, that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, and I'm sure there's other partnerships like that with uh, some of the other hosting providers. I know um, with uh, WordPress.com hosting, you do get a pretty good number of premium themes uh, as part of your business account. So like if you have a business uh, level account with them, then you're getting access to a lot of premium themes that way. So that's a really nice feature. Um, <clears throat> so in some cases, when you're when you're getting these premium themes, you buy like a like a membership for the theme uh, company, the theme foundry that creates these themes. In some cases, you pay per theme. Uh, it really just depends on who's providing the themes. In a lot of cases, commercial themes are based on a framework that is created by the company that makes the the themes. Um, so if you're familiar with frameworks like Bootstrap or Foundation. Um, those are really good for for making responsive uh, web pages in general. Um, so in a lot of cases, what these theme foundries have done is they've discovered that if they have a framework um, that they can use to make their sites, their, all of their themes responsive, um, add like all the customization, the options, and make it really consistent, then it made it a lot easier to update themes sort of across the board, across all of their, their offerings. Um, so when you have a, a theme company that's using that framework, what you'll usually do is you'll install the framework. Uh, so in the case of Studio Press, that's called Genesis. And then the theme itself that you're actually using is usually a child theme that is sort of a, a customization of that. It's going to have uh, different CSS, uh, different styles, different uh, layout, different images. So it's got some, uh, some templates that uh, differ from the framework. Um, and you have to install both of those to get it to work. So you need to keep the parent frame, the parent theme and the child theme installed for it to work. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's a nice, it's a nice feature, uh, for themes. Um, now I did mention studio press and I will show you how to install Genesis and one of their child themes in just a minute. Um, we also use themes. Some of our clients like elegant themes. Um, they use another framework called Divi. 
Um, and then we also have clients that use Woo themes. Uh, we will talk a little bit more about WooCommerce in just a few minutes, uh, but Woo themes are from WooCommerce, which is actually owned by the company that runs WordPress.com. <coughs> Excuse me, but a lot of their themes are using a framework as well. So if you want to install a WordPress commercial theme, uh, you would go into the WordPress dashboard and you would go to themes and you would click on add new. But this time, instead of selecting an option from down here, you would actually click on upload theme. So I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to go to uh, my themes and I'm going to inst install Genesis. That is the framework. And I'm going to install that. Now, if I wanted to, I could activate it. But let me show you what it looks like if I was to activate that. It's kind of boring. Um, it's the parent theme. It, it's not really that pretty by itself. I mean, it's OK, but it's really not great by itself. It doesn't have much style to it. It's just sort of kind of boring. Uh, so I'm going to add another one. I'm going to upload another theme. And in this case, I'm going to up add Breakthrough Pro. Breakthrough Pro. So I'll install that one. And I'm going to click on Live Preview before I activate it. And this will show me the theme. It'll show me my site within that theme. You can see it's got some styling. It's got some default images, default colors. I can go through and change that if I needed to. So I can say uh, here I want the colors to be green for the background, purple, that overlay, and make that blue. So that's going to be that, <coughs> excuse me, that button and a bunch of other stuff. So you can see those colors are used various places throughout the site. Uh, I can go through and I can also change uh, the background images. Sorry, not the background images. Where is it? Breakthrough Pro settings, image settings. Um, I can change this image to my orangutans. Here we go. Cute. So you can see we've got a lot of images that we can change here, or we could remove them if we needed to. And I also can go through and I can play around with my widgets. Notice that you have a lot of widgets here, and most of them are for the front page. Uh, you also have the menus like we had with those other themes. This is just another way to edit them. Um, so if I wanted to add sample page, for example, there's contact us and sample page. Now, after I go through and I customize this, um, I can click. Note now. Remember, I did live preview. I didn't just activate the theme. I wanted to make all these changes, and I wanted to customize it without actually making it live. So, like, if I went and looked at the site right now, even though I've made all the customization, it still looks like it did before. So, if I click on activate and publish, when I look at the site now, it's got all of those things set for it. So there we go. So that is a parent theme and a child theme. So remember, the parent theme in this case is Genesis. The child theme is Breakthrough Pro. Now, after you've gone through and played around with the themes and you've found the theme that you really like, you might want to clean up some of your themes. Um, you can actually go through and click on the theme details, and you can delete them. So you can just go through, and the, the delete's down in the bottom right corner down there. So you can just go through and delete. Uh, I usually do that. I try to keep my dashboard relatively clean. Let me delete these. There we go. <clears throat> so you can install, I can, I'm going to install another uh, child theme of Genesis. So I've got to upload. Uh, I'm going to install Infinity Pro here. Just so you can see. And I'll, again, I'm going to do live preview. So I could I could modify this one as well. Not going to, but if you if you did not click on activate and publish, you could just close that, and it's not going to save the changes. So we're still going to be in that breakthrough pro theme. All right, let me just check and see if there's any questions before I move on. Uh, w three layouts. 
Uh, Bob, I have not heard of W3 layouts, but I will look at it. Let me look it up real quick. See what it is. Robo website template designs. I have not heard of W3 layouts. Um, just looking at it. I'm not sure if it's WordPress themes. It looks like they might have WordPress themes. Um, I would have to do a little bit more research on it, but I would, I personally would go with the, uh, some of the theme repositories that, uh, that I already mentioned. Uh, and, and a lot of that is because, uh, some of you might have been to sites like Code Canyon or, um, what is it? Code Canyon, uh, Theme Forest. I, I couldn't remember the name of it. Theme Forest. So there is a website out there called Theme Forest and, and some of you may have heard of it. Um, and they sometimes you can get some really good stuff off of there. Sometimes the stuff you get is complete junk. So it's sort of hit or miss. I mean, you can you can go through and and you can you can search or you can you can read the reviews and everything, but um, it, it's really hit or miss. Uh, you got to be careful there. I will tell you that the vast majority of the time, I get a client that's coming to me and saying, "Help." My site's broken, it got hacked, there's an issue, the, the theme is broken. Most of the time they found the theme on Theme Forest. Um, and, it, and it could just be that they had bad luck with that particular theme, um, but just, I, I kind of stay away from them. Um, what, I, what I would recommend is if you go to wordpress.org and you go to themes on wordpress.org, they have a commercial themes directory. So these are GPL themes. Um, these are themes that they think that they say, yes, these are good themes. Um, and you can see that there, there are quite a few options on here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So there are a lot. So if you can't find something in there, let me know and I can, I can help you find it. Um, my, my criteria for the theme is that, you know, it's got to have a pretty good um, solid support. Uh, that it needs to be updated relatively, uh, relatively frequently. Um, so, you know, if the theme hasn't been updated in the last five years, you probably don't want to use it. Uh, it's probably not going to be a good, a good use of it. Um, but yeah, so um, these are, these are all pretty good themes to, to try. Um, and then I've also got that list of themes that, that we use pretty frequently on our sites. All right, so I want to move on to the next topic. Let me just double check and see if there are any other questions before I do. Okay. I think we're good. All right, so the next thing I want to mention is customizing themes. So as you already saw, we have the ability to customize the themes to some degree. Um, that's going to be in that live preview and the customization settings. So you can do things like change the colors, some of the images, some of the backgrounds. Um, you also saw that some of the themes have uh, spaces for widgets that you can customize. Um, the options that you have for those are going to depend on the theme. If you want to go beyond those customizations, if you need to make it more custom, you need to add um, a new widget area that doesn't exist uh, and stuff like that, then you might need to do one of two things. Um, the hard thing, the hard way, would be customizing the code of the theme. Um, that in itself can be dangerous because if you customize the code of the theme, you're you're doing what's called forking the theme. You're you're actually forking. It's F O R K, um, like the utensil that you use, um, but or the like a fork in the road is really what you're doing. Um, so you're creating a branch of that theme um, that isn't necessarily going to be updated. So. You're, if, if you're buying that custom theme from somebody, you're buying a commercial theme from somebody um, and they've got, uh, they update it pretty regularly whenever they find a bug in it or, you know, when a new framework comes out, they're, they're making updates to it, adding new features to it. You're breaking that ability to update. Um, this is something that we've run into a lot with clients where um, they're maybe using a legacy theme that a previous developer has installed for them, customized, they forked it for them because it didn't do exactly what they needed. Um, so they made a fork and then they could not update the theme. And so they would run into all kinds of problems uh, when jQuery needed to be updated or something else needed to be changed. Uh, there was a bug in a browser that needed to be addressed. So when they ran into those issues, they couldn't 
they couldn't update the theme to fix it because it would break their custom functionality. So you do have to be careful with that. You have to do it the right way. Um, you might want to create an additional child theme or there, there's, there's a lot of options you have with that. Um, another option that you have is to create, is to use something called a visual page builder. Um, some of the developers that I work with would kill me for telling you that you should, you could use a visual page builder uh, because they, they hate them. Um, there, there, there are good things and bad things about visual page builders. Um, they've, they've improved vastly over the past several years. Um, it used to be when you used a visual page builder, you could almost guarantee that your site was going to be bloated. It was going to have a lot of extra code and it was going to take a while for the pages to load. Uh, they have made some, some big improvements in that, in that part. Um, but you know, if, if, if you don't want to customize the code, let's say that you're not a web developer, you're, you don't know PHP, you don't know HTML or CSS or anything, and you do need to make some minor customization, to your site, you could use one of these page editors to do that. Um, they do let you change the appearance of the stuff inside of your theme without having to know how to do code. Um, you still need to learn how to use the, the page builder, uh, but they're, they're usually pretty easy to do. Um, so if you find a theme that's got good bones, it's, it's got kind of a good overall structure, uh, the colors uh, that, you, that you can customize, the fonts are good, um, it's, it's got the menu structure is, is nice if all that works for you. Um, but you maybe just need to add a template that has, you know, multiple columns or it's got a, a hero image and the, the theme doesn't support that, or, you know, you want to add just little features like that, then a page builder is really good because <coughs> it can, most of the page builders will allow you to do that, but they work within the sort of structure or the skeleton of the of the theme that you're working in. So you are still somewhat limited as far as what you can build. Um, and in some in some cases, uh, the theme, the visual page builders will require you to use a specific theme um, or they're going to insert codes into your into your content. Um, so it's it's kind of making a little bit of a mess of your content when you do that. And if you switch to a different theme, then all of that content that it added uh, then it's, it could not, it might not work in that new theme. So just something to be aware of if you use these. Um, when you use page builders like this, that uh, sometimes your content gets kind of messed up. So just something to be aware of. But, you know, if, if you don't have a budget to hire a developer to, to do the customization that you need, this is something that you might want to consider. Um, there are several page builders out there. Um, some, some of them are pretty good. Uh, we've got clients that have used all of these. Um, Beaver Builder is really popular. Uh, it's, and you, so basically what you do with, with uh, these theme builders, or sorry, these page builders, is you can add um, editable sections to your page, like just by kind of dragging and dropping them on the page. Uh, if, we, if we take a look at the demo here for Beaver Builder, you can see it's really easy once it loads. Give it a second here. So you can do things like you can move the columns around. Oops, let me cancel that. <clears throat> I'm going to add. So you can see it looks a lot like Gutenberg. It's got a lot of the same kind of content as Gutenberg. Gutenberg. Um, but let's say I wanted to add a uh, accordion. Not a lot of pricing table here. So it's got a lot of built-in stuff. Eh, let me add something else. All right. You can't, I don't know if you can see it on the screen. It's kind of hard. But so uh, this is just letting me add an accordion. Let me add a few items here. It's kind of hard to see them on this background. But let me change the style. There we go. Maybe a little bit easier to see. Let's, let's see. Got a lot of settings here. Oh. <clears throat> so anyway, so that, that's going to give me um, the ability to kind of add columns, add widgets, add all kinds of really cool stuff uh, to a page, add a gallery, add forms, uh, and customize the page. And the nice thing with these is that this is drag and drop. So I can move my accordion to other parts of the page if I needed to. So if I wanted this 
to go before the accordion, I could do that pretty easily. I can just drag it up and down. So makes it easier for non-coders to add some really nice stuff. So that's Beaver Builder. Uh, another one that we've used before is Divi Builder. Um, the live WordPress, uh, site, the live pongos.com site currently has Divi on it. Um, we've used it for a couple of sites. It's it's pretty good. <clears throat> Excuse me. I like it. And then uh, we've worked with several clients that use Elementor as well. So these all have the same basic basic stuff. So pick one that you like. Um, you can you can do. I, in fact, it might be a good idea for me to do another webinar just on visual page builders and sort of an overview of those because uh, there are a lot of differences, uh, a lot of pluses and minuses for each of them. So that that might be another one that we can do later on. All right. <clears throat> so the last thing that we're going to talk about, um, let me just double check, make sure there are no questions. I don't see any. OK. Um, so the last thing we're going to talk about is extending the functionality of your WordPress site. And that is done using plugins. So if you remember, we talked about before, we talked about um, with themes, we extend, let me go back to themes. We separated the content from the appearance. So one of the other things with uh, WordPress is that we're going to separate the content from functionality. So <clears throat> the content is independent of the functionality of the site. Remember, the content's all being stored in the database. The functionality is all handled either by the core WordPress framework, the, the, the WordPress application. Um, and if the functionality that's built into that, that baseline application isn't sufficient for you, then you could add extensions to it. And those extensions are called plugins in WordPress. So the plugins are written with PHP. Uh, in a lot of cases, there's also HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, and other stuff. Um, and they let you do things like add uh, e-commerce to your website. So you can add a shopping cart. You can add products. You can add uh, payment gateways. Um, you can add WordPress plugins that will allow you to create custom post types, as I mentioned earlier. We actually build WordPress plugins for uh, association clients that allow the website, their websites, their WordPress websites to be integrated with a association management system like uh, NetForum or Salesforce. So uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. If, if you name it, and you can probably find a WordPress plugin that can do it. Uh, and if not, you can probably hire a WordPress developer that can make that plugin for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So just like we had community themes, there are a lot of community plugins. And again, like the community themes, these community plugins are free, as in free speech, um, and also as in free beer. So uh, they you don't pay for them. You can and, and uh, like the free plugin, sorry, like the free themes, um, some of them do have premium upgrades to give you more options. And also like the the free themes, the community themes, uh, these plugins are available through the dashboard. So we'll hop back in that dashboard. And plugins are down here on the left side. <clears throat> so these plugins were all installed. These are all plugins that were installed uh, by default with the Bitnami installer. Um, when you install WordPress, the plugins that you have uh, automatically are going to depend on who installed WordPress for you um, and how it was installed. So like if you install it in WP Engine, they have sort of a like a baseline set of plugins that get installed. Uh, Bitnami has a baseline. That's what all these are. Um, different, different hosting providers will give you different plugins as the baseline. So just be aware that what you see there might be different from what I see here. Um, I think the only one that actually comes by default, or the only ones that come by default, might be the Akismet Anti-Spam and Hello Dolly. I'm not even sure anymore. It's been a while since I've done a baseline install uh, of just the thing from WordPress.org. Um, but you have a lot of options. So um, you can install plugins very similar to how you install themes. So if you go to plugins and then click on add new, you can see there's lots of plugins here. So you can do things like uh, add the classic editor. <laughs> Notice the classic editor has got five stars, Gutenberg's got two stars. 
Um, the classic editor is the old way of doing WordPress. So I'm going to install that. Click on install. And then like with the themes, once you install it, installing it's basically just making a copy of it from the, the server to your installation. And then you actually need to activate it to turn it on. So I'm just going to install and I'm going to activate it. So now if I go to my posts, Uh, this is now the classic editor. So because I installed and activated the classic editor, that's what I'm seeing instead of uh, the um, the uh, the Gutenberg editor. So it's showing it to me differently. If I want to turn that off, I have to go back into plugins and I have to deactivate it. So now when I go into my posts, now it's going to take me back into the Gutenberg. So that's an extension to the functionality. They, they, Gutenberg is part of the baseline, but they, um, they, know, they knew a lot of people were still going to want to have the, the classic editing. So they, they made that an option by adding that plugin. So some other plugins that you could add. Um, I'm going to add, I'm going to search for one. So you can, you can search under popular for stuff that you might want to add. Let's see, there's lots of them on here. Can search for recommended. There's a good one that's uh, for security, WordFence. Lots of installations. So if you if you are concerned with sec your security, you can install that. Elementor is available for free. Um, when you're looking for plugins to install, just a few things I want you to be aware of. Um, look look and see when it was last updated. So you can see here this was last updated three weeks ago seven days ago, 12 hours ago. So you want to make sure that when you're installing these plugins that um, that they are being actively supported. Uh, so you're not paying for them. <laughs> so you want to you want to make sure that they're they are being updated, uh, even if you're not paying for them. You want to just make sure that somebody's maintaining those plugins because uh, you can find plugins on here that have not been updated uh, in months or even years. So just something to be aware of. The other thing to note is that uh, you you do you can see how many stars it has. So yeah, you know some some people just don't like it. Like if you know if you look back at Gutenberg, it's got two stars. It's it's a new feature. People don't sometimes don't like change, so they didn't like the editor, and that's okay. Um, but you can see that some of these other plugins, uh, like if we search for um, let's see, let's go under favorites. No, I don't have any. Sorry, let's go to, I want to go to like the last page here. <coughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to find one that doesn't have a lot of stars. Cell Media. You can see here this one. It's been updated a year over a, a year ago. Uh, it's only got three stars. I probably wouldn't install this one, but just in case, like if it did exactly what I wanted it to do, like if it had all the functionality I, had, I needed and I couldn't find it anywhere else, I might still install it. it just depends. Um, so I would go and what I just did was I clicked on the more details or you could just click on on the, the, the title. Um, you can see some more information. So like you can actually go and read under reviews why it's only got one star. So you can see I had a free trial, didn't work, doesn't has poor support. So these are all things that you want to check into and see if it's worth installing or not. <clears throat> I've never installed that one, so I don't know if, if those reviews are correct. Uh, but if I go back to beginning here under recommended and I go to WooCommerce, you can see that one's got four and a half stars. It's over one million active installations. Uh, if I go to reviews here, you can see a lot of, you know, five-star reviews. So some of them are three-star, one-star. Some people don't like it. And that's okay. You may, you may, they may have a specific use case that didn't work with, uh, with that particular plugin. So that's fine. Uh, so what I'm going to install right now, I'm, I'm actually going to install WooCommerce. So I'll click on install now. And again, it, it needs to be activated. So when I install and activate it, there we go. Uh, it's got, this one is a relatively involved one. So I need to run the setup wizard. 
Then you got to go through it. And not all plugins have this. So I'm just going to, oops. My Maryland. Say Maryland. Okay. Continue. Continue. Oops. No, let's turn this off. It's going to add a few things. So uh, one thing to note, WooCommerce is, um, I'm going to skip this step right here. WooCommerce is uh, owned by Automatic, which is the company that runs WordPress.com. Um, they also run Jetpack and a bunch of other uh, features uh, that are integrated with WordPress pretty nicely. Um, so just, just something to be aware of. Um, let me skip some of this. I'm going to go to the dashboard. So we can see. So now that I've installed WooCommerce, I now have orders, coupons, reports, settings, status, extensions. I've got my products here so I can go through and add products. Products are a, um, let me install the products block. Install that. Activate it. OK. Um, so if I go to my products, I want to add a new product. It's got a lot of features in here. You can extend this further with even more plugins. So like if I went to uh, WooCommerce.com, there are extensions to WooCommerce. Um, lots, of, lots of stuff that you can get there. Now, uh, WooCommerce itself is free. But if we go to WooCommerce.com, and we look at the extensions, you will see they sell a lot of the extensions. So some of them are free, some of them aren't. <clears throat> Excuse me. So like things like PayPal checkout, that's free. Um, if you need to have, they've got a lot of really good bundles here. Um, but let's say that you're uh, make, creating a membership site. Um, that's going to be a bunch of plugins that you need to install. And that's going to cost $300. And that's for one year. So it automatically would renew every year. You're going to pay $300 a year for all of those plugins. Um, and that's going to give you, if I scroll down, it's going to give you the Stripe payment gateway, subscriptions, downloads, memberships, name your price, and, and a few other uh, features. Um, they've also got a bookings bundle. So if you need to, you want to create a reservation website, you can use that. Um, they've also got this nice marketing bundle um, that's got a lot of really good features in it um, to help you uh, get your your e-commerce site out there. So they've, they've got some bundles there. You can also buy a lot of these plugins uh, individually. So if you need a site, uh, a plugin that does uh, wish lists, you can buy that $79. Um, in a lot of cases, these plugins, you're going to pay $79 to use it on one site. Um, you can pay a little bit more to use it on five sites. You can pay a little bit more still to use it on 25 sites. Um, so uh, in some cases, the uh, there are other uh, premium plugins, um, like uh, we, one that we use a lot is Gravity Forms. Um, the Gravity Forms is, we go to pricing. One site is $59. They have one, they have an elite license, which is for unlimited sites, and that's $259. So that means that as a WordPress developer, we can install this on all of our client sites and, and use them on there. Um, another one that we use, and this is this is one that we actually build is Smart Simeon. And these are premium plugins. Uh, we use Smart Simeon to create custom post types. So if you wanted to create a portfolio, you wanted to create a library, uh, testimonials or something like that, you wanted to be able to um, sort, search, filter, uh, all that stuff, um, then you would create custom post types with that. Smart Simeon is just one of many uh, custom post type creation tools. There are other ones out there. 
Um, <clears throat> excuse me, back to the slideshow, because I kind of jumped ahead to the uh, commercial plugins. So Gravity Forms is one that we do use frequently. Uh, let me present this. Um, another one that we use uh, is Event Calendar Pro. So we, um, we have a lot of stuff that's uh, event-based, and we sell tickets to events. Uh, the Pongos Learning Lab, we do events uh, pretty much most days of the week, usually f at least five days a week. Um, so we sell tickets for those, and we use Event Calendar Pro. Um, they've got some additional extensions. Their, their baseline Events Calendar plugin is free. It's a community plugin, um, but they have uh, extensions to it for uh, their Events Calendar Pro um, that you pay to uh, have additional features like recurring events. Um, they've also got their event tickets, which I believe is free. Yeah, the event tickets is free. You can get RSVPs from people. Um, if you want to sell the tickets, that you have to pay for. So we use we use that to integrate it with WooCommerce. Um, so each ticket is actually a product in WooCommerce. There's all kinds of stuff that we can do with this. Um, and then again, I already mentioned the WooCommerce extensions. Now installing a commercial plugin is a little bit different than installing one of those uh, community plugins. So if we looked at before we said add new, um, and you could just find a plugin here. Um, I'm going to close these nag screens real quick. Normally, if I was setting up a site, I would go through and, and set up all those things. But this is just to show you how this is done. Um, so if I was to upload the plugin, choose a file. I have Gravity Forms on my computer, so I'm going to install that. You can see it. Click Install Now. And just like you did before, you're going to activate the plugin. And there it is. It's installed. It doesn't really show you that it's installed, but it's installed because it's right here. Um, Gravity Forms is really nice. In this case, um, you need to enter a, a, a license key to get it to, get it to work. Um, actually, I think it does work without... Nope. They're going to force you to install license key to even use it. So in some cases you have to install, you have to add the license key to use it. In some cases you have to add the license key to get um, to get the automatic updates to work. It, it just depends on uh, what plugin you're using. So just something to be aware of. <clears throat> Excuse me, but, but Gravity Forms is really nice. It lets you create some really cool custom forms. Um, there are other form uh, editing tools out there. Um, there's one called Formidable. Um, there's uh, Ninja Forms. There's all kinds of forms out there. So, all right. So that is commercial plugins. All right. So that is pretty much it for the formal uh, presentation. Um, so we've got a few minutes left. If you have any questions, um, let's see. I don't see any in chat right now. But if you want to go ahead and ask in chat uh, on the live chat or the group chat in the Hangout, or if you want to send me an email. Uh, if you're a Facebook friend, you can message me and I can answer it. So I'll wait a few minutes. See if anybody has any questions. I see a couple of you still, or a few of you are still watching. Um, now, if you are watching this after the live, uh, live broadcast and you have a question, uh, ask it. You can you can put it as a comment on the the video. Um, I will try to answer it either in response to that comment, um, or if I know your email address or I can message you, I can I can probably send you some more detailed information. Uh, if you would rather send me an email, um, I'm not going to say what it is on the broadcast because I don't want to get spammed. Um, but if you send it to info at pongos.com, that's probably fine. Um, but you probably got my personal email address uh, when you got the, the link for the broadcast in uh, from the Eventbrite registration. Um, if you didn't get the Eventbrite registration because you're watching this after the fact, uh, that's fine. Just put a comment on the, on the video and I will try to answer it as soon as I can. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll get in touch with you somehow uh, if if it's something that needs a little bit more detail. Um, just be aware that that this is what I do for a living. So if you ask a really really detailed question that is going to take me a few hours to answer and or have to demonstrate it for you, um, I probably will have to like set up consulting or some one on one training 
um, to help you with that. If it's something that I think would be good for sort of a more broad response, I might just do a video for it and post it on here and I'll, I'll post a link to it as a, as a response to the comment. So if it's something about, um, you know, installing, uh, Installing commercial plugins or a commercial, a specific commercial plugin, some more detail about that. Um, then I might just, I might just do a video for that as the response, so I can sort of share it with a broader audience. So, um, but ask questions. Uh, you know, I like, I like to answer them. Some of you have known me for a while. I, I like to help, and I, and I will help as much as I can um, when I can. So, let's see. I'm just going to check the live chat. Any questions? Adding a couple of places, so I gotta check. All right, I don't think I see any questions. I don't see anybody typing. So I'm going to wrap it up. Oops, click in there. Uh, so I do appreciate you all watching this video, uh, watching the, the rebroadcast if you are. Uh, again, ask questions if you have them. Uh, subscribe if you are interested in catching some more content. Um, I, I, do I do these videos every few months. Um, I, I want to do them more frequently, uh, but we usually do things on like, uh, I, I build apps with WordPress. Um, so I'll occasionally do one on that, um, building an app with WordPress. Uh, do I'll do videos on uh, custom post types and taxonomies and stuff like that. Um, sometimes you won't see the, the 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 videos publicly because I hide them. Um, so I make them available only to people that are um, that sign up to watch the video via the Eventbrite link. So if you want to make sure that you get those, uh, definitely subscribe. But also. Um, contact me by, uh, via the Eventbrite link and I can add you to the mailing list. I don't, I don't just add people to the mailing list. I don't, I don't like, I don't want to spam people. Um, or if you're on the Pongos Learning Lab mailing list, sometimes I, uh, I let people know on there that we're going to do a, a live webinar. Um, but I'm trying to do these at least every couple of months, uh, cause I, I do think it's useful, uh, to get this information out to people. So I appreciate your time. Uh, and I hopefully we'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Now I just got to find the stop broadcast. Okay. Have a good one. Thanks, everybody. Bye.